Yes. Officer Smith Holt, S M I T H H O L T. Officer. Uh, you can call me Holt. Uh, were you formerly uh, Officer Holt? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Have you gotten married since uh, April of 2015? Divorced. Mm -hmm. And um, can you tell uh, the jurors uh, how you uh, are currently employed? Um, I'm employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department as an officer. And uh, how long have you been employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department? 13 years. Um, I was assigned in zone four, then zone two, and now I'm in open records. Okay. And uh, back uh, on April 28th of 2015, can you tell the jurors uh, what zone uh, were you uh, assigned to? Zone four. Okay. And can you please just kind of talk about zone three and where it is within the city of Atlanta? Where is zone four uh, contained? Right now? Southwest Atlanta. If you're familiar with the Cascade area, um, Campbellton Road area, um, um, that's, good. That, that's good. Okay. Probably about five years. Um, mainly morning watch. Shift would be from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. Can you describe to the jurors uh, when you were on duty working um, 11 p.m. into uh, early morning, 7 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, what was your primary uh, job responsibilities or duties um, while working as a patrol officer and so forth? Answering 911. All calls. And uh, can you tell the jurors uh, back on April 28th, 2015, at around 5 a.m., were you dispatched to the address 2900 Landon Drive? Yes, that's correct. And can you tell the jurors uh, that that year within the city of Atlanta, Fulton County? Yes, it is. Okay. And I want to show you what's been marked <coughs> State's Exhibit 1, Delta, 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 O. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, can you tell the jurors how you recognize the photographs in uh, State Exhibit 1, uh, Delta Delta O, through uh, 4, uh, Delta Delta O? Uh, this was the call I was dispatched to, 2900 Landrum Drive. Um, I was dispatched to a person shot call. Okay. And you said that this was around 5 a.m. that morning? Yes. Yes. This time around in the state of the center, what's been marked state exhibit 1 B B O through 4 D D D. Is there another? Now, can you tell the jurors when you arrived to the apartment complex? Do you remember the name of the complex? I believe it's Crystal something. 
Oh, okay. Eagles is okay. The sign looks familiar, but I don't remember the name okay. exactly. Yes. On the screen, you have it in front of you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell for sure uh, what the sign says in front of the complex? <clears throat> Excuse me, 2900 Langer Drive. Eagle's Nest Apartments. And um, in the photos that you looked at uh, and that are now submitted into evidence behind it in 2DDDO uh, through 4 mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And you said you responded to a person shot call? Yes, that's correct. And can you tell the jury when you responded to that person shot call, what was, what was the first thing that you kind of did as it related to uh, that call? Um, well, as I approached, I, of course, notified radio, and I proceeded to the apartment where the person was shot. Okay. And um, can you tell the jury? Is a female. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> you call the name of uh, the female that was shot? I believe it's Miss Kilpatrick. Okay. And um, when you arrived, uh, did you have the opportunity to uh, interact with um, the female Miss Kilpatrick who had been shot? Yes. And uh, can you describe, so tell me what she said, okay. what the interaction was like, what you did as it related to uh, assisting uh, Miss Kilpatrick with um, her gunshot? Um, I was able to ask her where she was injured and what she was doing while she was injured. Okay. Um, were you able to actually see like, the interaction with her where she was actually shot? Um, I believe I recall seeing where she was injured, but not the details of her injury. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell the jurors uh, if you remember where uh, you saw that she had been injured or shot? Right leg. Yes. Okay. And as you were there, um, did uh, medical assistance or uh, EMS arrive uh, and begin to uh, provide medical uh, assistance to uh, Ms. Kilpatrick? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, while on scene, while Ms. Kilpatrick was being treated, um, was she uh, eventually loaded into an ambulance and transported to Brady Hospital? Yes, that's correct. I spoke to her mother. Um, she gave me details on the damages to the apartment. And then I recall radio telling me that other apartments were affected as well. Do you recall um, how many other apartments were affected as it relates to um, shooting that early morning? Three other apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in building 15. Okay. And can you tell the jurors, um, within this apartment complex, you've got building 15. Um, do you know how many buildings were uh, contained within uh, Eagle's Nest apartment complex? Total? Okay. I'm yeah. not sure in total. Um, okay. I believe it went all the way up to the 20s. Okay. So it was a fairly large apartment complex. Yes. I don't believe I had to travel far, no. And as you heard over the radio, mm -hmm. other uh, apartments uh, in either that building or other buildings mm -hmm. uh, had been damaged, is that what you said? Yes. And can you tell the jurors um, where those three other reported apartments that have been shot were located in relation? Um, if I'm recalling correctly, they're all lined next to each other. Okay. There's 15, 16, and 19. I believe they're all lined together. 
if my recollection is correct. And then because we see that you're having a little technical difficulties, I'm going to go all this for on Thursday. The record as well as for defense counsel, I'm showing four DEOs for sure. Now, uh, Officer Smith, all the buildings um, look the same pretty much? Yes. Okay. And Miss um, Kilpatrick, she lived in building uh, 15. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Yes, so um, the second apartment I went into, that was also in Building 15. Um, the third apartment was in 16, and then the last apartment was in Building 19. Excuse me. <clears throat> Thank you. No. Okay. And um, while you were on scene, did you tell your, um, after uh, locating and observing and uh, doing your investigation mm -hmm. into the damage to those apartments, mm -hmm. um, while on scene, mm -hmm. did you locate uh, any evidence of uh, gunfire, ballistics evidence, like shell casings or projectiles? Yes. And can you tell the jury a little bit about um, what kind of ballistic, excuse me, ballistic evidence? You located and where uh, within the area we described uh, in the building the I can recall several um, shell casings within those apartments. Um, I can recall some walls, windows being shot. That's all I really can remember. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't really recall it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, well, seen, uh, <clears throat> uh, did uh, crime scene tech uh, green and other members of uh, the crime scene tech division uh, arrive and kind of process and photograph the scene like routinely? Yes. Yes. And uh, is it common for officers and investigators to work in conjunction or with uh, the crime scene tech uh, that shows up in the division? Um, it's more than one tech. Yes. Okay. And uh, is it common to walk the scene and things of that nature that you've already done? Yes. No. Defense Thank you. All right. Anybody else? None? No. No. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. You are excused. Call your next witness. Antoinette Green, A-N-T-O-N-E-T-T-E-G-R-E-E-N. Um, 
Um, I currently work for the City of Atlanta Police Department Crime Scene Unit. Okay. And uh, can you tell us how long you've worked uh, with the City of Atlanta Police Department? I've been with the City of Atlanta for 13 years. Okay. And uh, you just said that you uh, work within the division of the crime scene, uh, Texas Division. Have you worked uh, in that division for the entire 13 years that you've been involved? Yes. Okay, when we arrive on the scene, we meet with the lead investigator or officer, and then we do a walkthrough of the crime scene, and then after that, we'll start the process of taking photographs and collecting evidence at that time. Um, were you employed uh, with the City of Atlanta Police Department um, within the Crime Scene Tech Division uh, back on April 28th of 2016? Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors, um, were you dispatched or called to shooting scene, the person shot uh, at 2900 uh, Landon uh, Drive here in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, I was. Okay. And I want to show you the state's exhibits 5DDDO through uh, 70DDDO. Um, okay. And tell me if you recognize those photos. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, the, all the photographs that we're looking at now that you had uh, an opportunity prior to your testimony to review, um, the, uh, all of these photographs fairly and accurately depict um, the scene that you arrived to at 2900 uh, Landon Drive on April 28, 2016, roughly 5 a.m. Yes, they do. Like I stated before, I met with the lead officer. We did a walkthrough of the scene. She pointed out all the evidence and anything of value she wanted me to collect and photograph. And then after I did, after I do that, I go back and I start from the beginning and start taking overalls of the scenes with the evidence and everything. And can you tell me what you mean uh, by overalls as it relates to the photographs that you take um, when you arrive? Okay, uh, overall is general, like a general area of the whole scene uh, depicted in the photograph. Okay. And um, after you take overall photographs, um, do you take uh, additional photos um, of the area, I guess, which you just uh, photographed, but kind of closer up? Yes, after I do an overall, I do a mid-range, which is a little closer into the scene, and then I do a close-up of any evidence or anything they want me to, t uh, to be a close-up of. Yes, I do it with and without placards. And um, with reference placards, can you tell the jurors uh, what do you mean by placards and uh, what is the, the, the purpose uh, of the placards being uh, mentioned? Okay, placards are the little yellow, I guess, markers with the numbers on it. That's what we consider as a placard. And what uh, the numbers represent is like where we start first and goes up to a series of uh, number of evidence that we have. Yes. Prior to your arrival, um, has the scene been secured by uh, first responding uh, officers and investigators um, before you get up here? Yes, it's already secured with evidence tech. Mm -hmm. okay. And is that what you see here uh, in the state exhibit 7 DDDO? Yes, this is uh, uh, marked off with evidence, uh, the crime scene tape, and also with the markers. Okay. And um, in uh, this instance, when you uh, arrive, 
arrived on the scene and took your uh, overall mid-range and close-up uh, of the scene as is, we described to the jurors, you can see some of the yellow placard 7 uh, DVDO. Um, describe to the jurors what, guess, what type of evidence you found uh, in the area of the apartment complex here in the uh, station 7 DVDO. Right. Uh, the evidence that is on the ground and sidewalk are called shell casings. Uh, a total on the scene, that's what you want. Uh, it was a total of 41 shell casings. Oh, no, they're not all. Well, they're majority of there, but they're up on the hill. They're scattered on the hill as well. Yes, uh, yes. And um, each one of the shell casings, was it 41? I told, well, 43 markers, uh, total 41 shell casings, two projectiles, I believe. That was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, were they all, all of the ballistic evidence that you described uh, contained within the area which we're seeing here at 11 DVDO, building 15, 16 through this area of night? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, collected. You said shell casings and projectiles. Uh, what is the difference between a shell casing and a projectile? Okay, the shell casing is the actual casing that is ejected out from the firearm. It's the little silver shell. The projectile is actually the bullet that goes out of the shell. Okay, and uh, can you tell the jurors, uh, as it relates <coughs> to the shell casings you just described, um, all of, were all of the shell casings that you located, uh, found, I guess, outside of uh, the apartment complex on the hill or uh, in the area of the uh, sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, can you tell the jurors um, a projectile? Um, what is a projectile? Uh, it's the, the actual piece of metal that is fired from the shell casing. And do you remember or recall uh, where on the scene you located uh, the two projectiles you described? Uh, yes, I remember. I think one was near a patio or near the, the apartment itself, and one was in the in our apartment. Okay, so those two projectiles, the I'll, I'll call it the bullet, term, yeah, the layman's term, um, those were, were those fired from uh, a gun, I guess. Yes, okay, and you said those were found um, in one of the buildings, whether it be 15, um, 16, or 19, either on the patio or within uh, a damaged apartment. That is correct. Okay. Now, after photographing um, all of the placards and the evidence um, that the placards represent, mm -hmm. um, can you tell the jurors kind of what you do next as it relates to your processing and um, collection of the evidence? Yes, after uh, they're marked, photographed, they are collected, which they go into each individual uh, would be like a bullet bag. They're all marked separately in their own bag. Then we take it back to the um, lab, depending on what the investigator wants. I believe these are sent to um, our crime lab for ballistics. Okay. I just want to ask you a couple more questions about um, the packaging of each one of the um, pieces of evidence, which yes. are the shell casings and projectile. You said you put them in uh, a, a bullet bag. Um, does each projectile or shell casing go in its own individual um, little envelope or a bullet bag, as you described? Yes. And um, after you collect the evidence and put it within uh, the bullet bag or the envelope um, and seal it, do you uh, label it with a specific case number? Yes. And uh, is, it, is it a case number that's unique, uh, uniquely assigned to the scene in which you have been dispatched to and... Um, do what you've just described as relates to photographing and processing it. Yes. Okay. And um, on that bag, um, we described the unique case numbers on there. Mm -hmm. After you've sealed it, do you sign it with your name? Yes, I initial it on the back. And as it relates.
relates to what we've seen in the photographs uh, here today uh, of the scene that you uh, processed and photographed, do you put the placard number outside, um, I guess, uh, on the envelope uh, as it relates to what we've seen in the photograph? Yes, that's how we determine which one to, the pits with. Yeah, number one, number two, yes. <laughs> Seems silly, right? That no. Silly question. Yeah. Now, um, can you tell uh, the jurors, uh, do you also put a description of uh, where the specific projectile uh, was found uh, also on that envelope or uh, bag? Yes, we do. Okay. And is that something you do uh, for all uh, evidence that you uh, collect uh, in any scene here at 2900 Landham Drive um, on the during the early morning hours of April 28th of 2015? Yes. Okay. And um, after you were done uh, photographing and uh, processing and collecting evidence, did that complete your, I guess, role as it relates to um, your part of the investigation? That is correct, yes. And I got, let me ask you one more uh, series of questions. Um, before you, uh, I guess, collect, not collect, but I guess bag uh, the evidence like you've described, uh, can you describe uh, to the jurors, do you ever attempt to, I guess, pull uh, fingerprints from either shell casings or projectiles like you've described today? Yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors, if you recall, I know it's been some time, did you attempt to do that as it relates to the shell casings and the two projectiles uh, that you uh, located and collected back on April 28th of 2015? Mm. I cannot recall on that. Um, Would looking at a, a copy of your report uh, help uh, yes. refresh your recollection? Yes. And I should probably ask you, did you do a report as it relates to this uh, Ye case? Yes. And is that something you do uh, as it relates to all scenes um, when you uh, respond and you describe it today in some parts of that? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, can I approach the witness with her yeah. uh, report? Based on my reports, no, I just did photos and ballistics on the on the shell cases. Okay, and um, can you tell the jurors, uh, based on your 13 years of experience uh, as a crime scene tech for uh, APD, um, can you tell the jurors, is it common or is it uncommon uh, to locate uh, fingerprints on uh, shell casings and uh, projectiles? Objection, that's the foundation. Well, let me ask you this. Ruled. You can answer the question. Okay, so you're asking me, do we usually, yeah, oh, <laughs> okay. Poorly worded. Okay. So uh, in your number of years, I think you said 13, uh, mm -hmm. working as a crime scene tech with APD, um, have you attempted to uh, pull uh, fingerprints uh, off of shell casings or projectiles? Okay, I'm going to answer. Yes, we process for latent prints, but usually we, we find no prints. <laughs> You were able to answer my weird, my bad question. Okay. Now, can you tell the jurors what are latent prints? Uh, fingerprints off uh, the shell cases, basically. Based on your number of years of experience and your training, uh, can you tell the jurors why um, you aren't typically able to lift latent prints from either shell casings or projectiles that have been fired? Objection as to foundation. With regard to her, whether she that has correct, expertise to say that? That is correct. Okay. Do you want to ask a couple more questions? I can. Um, through your number of years of experience, have you received training uh, as it relates to uh, lifting or um, processing for uh, latent prints? Yes. And can you tell the jurors um, briefly a little bit about some of the training that you've received as it uh, in regards to um, latent prints and uh, lifting them um, from different types of ob objects? Okay, so when we lift latent prints, um, we use uh, a black powder, 
Sometimes, depending on the surface, a black, black powder is all we use. Sometimes, depending on the surface, we would super glue, basically put it in the chamber, let the super glue heat up, it adhere to the prints on the object, then we'll go in with a powder to see if it, if it raised, if we have a, a lift, a print, and then we'll use a, a tape to lift the print off. And uh, the two methods that you've described, whether it just be the powder or the super glue and the powder, um, and then the use of the tape, is that something that you've um, done uh, throughout your 13 years um, as a crime scene tech um, here with the City of Atlanta Police Department? Yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors throughout those 13 years, um, have many of the times that you attempted to lift latent prints uh, been off of uh, fired shell casings or projectiles? Yeah. Oh, um, ask it again. Have you, during your 13 years, attempted to lift latent prints off of shell casings or projectiles? Yes. Um, in this instance, you said you did not, um, but you also described to the jurors um, that it is very uncommon uh, that you get latent prints off of fired shell casings or projectiles. Based on your training experience um, uh, and number of times throughout the 13 years in which you uh, utilized uh, the procedures you just described to lift latent prints, why is it uncommon to um, not lift latent prints from fire shell casings or projectiles? Same objection. So I think you asked about, but I'm not sure she um, talked about any of her training. So you, you yeah. can try to lay the foundation. Yeah, well, you, your Honor, Your Honor, can, yes. can we also use the mic? It's really hard to yeah, hear. Yeah, sure. You're, you just have to pick it up, unfortunately. So let's go painstakingly through the number of uh, training that you've yes. received as it relates to uh, lifting latent prints mm -hmm. um, like we've described here today. I mean, like you just described uh, to the jurors with the powder and the super glue. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your training. Okay, so like I said, we go to we go to class. We, we learn it from a professor, and we do different types of surfaces. Uh, different surfaces adhere different type of prints if prints are left. Um, I guess for shell casings, you want to talk about the training for shell casings or? You can specifically talk about, talk about the training you've received as it relates to latent prints being lifted off the shell, shell case. Case. So with latent prints off of shell casings, what we do, we would put those in the super glue chamber uh, because those objects are small. So their prints are usually, if any, which they're so small, we ha have to have something to help lift it. So they go into the chamber. And then after the time is off, we'll take them out and we're, we would powder each one of them. And then we will look at them to see if prints are on there. Most of the time, they're not because of the because the shell casings is so small and the training you just you just described is that the same training you received um as uh, i guess a crime scene tech uh employed with the city of atlanta police department yes okay and i'm going to try it one more time now can you tell the jurors why it's uncommon to lift prints um off of fired shell casings or projectiles uh, because of usually when the shell case is fired, it it's when it's fired out the gun, it's heated up. So any prints usually are not they're resolved within the shooting. Thank you. We finally got there. <laughs> I don't think I have any further questions. All right. Is there any uh, defense questioning for this witness? Has no questions. Nope. Nope. Okay. Thank you for your time. Do you have another short witness?